All right, folks, Phil back here with a, a sort of build environment semi-special. Uh, we're going to be playing a machine for pigs over again, and we're going to be doing it uh, sober for a change. Uh, I've got Colton, and I've got uh, a new player to the peanut gallery. I've got Andrew with us. Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself to the internet? Hi, I'm Andrew. Yeah. So I played through this with Tim and Emma kind of blasted. And I really feel like I missed a, a non-trivial amount of what was going on. So we're going to play through this and we've got our thinking caps on. And uh, we're going to really go in, try to go into everything that we, we can think of. For the record, the show sober the is a relative word here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm drinking a beer, but... So you're saying you actually have some blood in your alcohol stream tonight? <laughs> I'm not pounding three glasses of absinthe tonight. No Dr. Shiny specials? Nope. Alright, it's a heart. What does it all mean? I don't know. Yeah, um, that's one thing. Uh, the loading screens on this game are a little bit painful. So while we're waiting for this, uh, we were talking about the soundtrack a little bit. Um, for the menu, during the menu, when we were staring at it. And, uh... I was thinking that it's got definite points in it where it's almost a 12-tone piece. It's very reminiscent of early, like, Vincent Price movies, almost. Yeah, there we go. I think it's just got this sequence, and then... Sometimes the whole game just compresses it and goes like. Rawr, rawr. All right, so we're starting with he who makes a beast of himself removes himself from the pain of being here. Daddy, Daddy, please don't kill me. I thought it was interesting the first time through that uh, the first time you hear the daddy daddy please don't kill me it sounds like a, a grown ass man and then it's kids so I'm wondering if that means that maybe there was some circumstance where an adult child begged his father not to kill him or if it was meant something else and then it flashed to the machine bed. And title card. Vaguely Thank surprised they weren't using Ring Around the Rosie like it's tradition. <laughs> I thought it was inspired by that. Inspired by what? I thought what we did here was loosely inspired by Ring Around the Rosie. Interesting. Um, care to elaborate on that? Plague Upon just, Mankind? Just sounded to be in the same singing tones that you normally hear that in. Hmm. Yeah, it was definitely some, some a creepy kid chant. Not sure... what the melody to it was. I 
All right, here we got our first note. I don't know if you guys can read that on the stream or the what. If I squint hard enough, yes. All right, I'll just read it out loud then. Uh, so we got our first uh, diary entry dated June 24th, 1899, so in June. Um, in my dreams, I see a man dressed in jaguar skins and feathered like a blooded saint. What came from the heart lubricated us. It crushed evil under its tread and liberated us all. The fetid heat of the jungle mirrored somewhere behind my forehead. My temple pounds. The blood boils in my skull. It feels as if there's something else alive in there. A rat, a damned rat gnawing through my brains eating its way out into the world. Even the laudanum will not quell its endless hunger. I hear my children playing in the attic, but it fills me with terror, not love. What desperate thoughts are these? Alright, so we got that note, and we got a pig mask. That doesn't look quite right for a human face. It looks too narrow. Or perhaps I don't have my scale calibrated correctly. No. no. Oh, you might be, might be right. Unfortunately, I can't then, pick it up and get a hard to closer determine look. in a video game. Yeah. I've always found that the Amnesia engine kind of plays with perspective a little bit. So, It's a reasonable design choice, if it is a design choice. So the first thing we do is we start with a note that seems to be some sort of human sacrifice thing. Well, this is set, what, 1900? 1899. Okay, so, 1900. So this is the height of uh, British colonialism in Africa, which is what that was very much reminiscent of. Right. Well, for all we know, this could simply be a feverish dream induced by malaria. Yeah. Although, jaguars. Are jaguars African? Or are they uh, South American? They're more South American, but there's enough confusion of terminology there, especially at the time, that we can at least believe Africa still. Alright, so this guy is having crazy human sacrifice African dreams. Uh, now he writes down a note in his journal. I wake alone to a house in silence. That missing sound of children playing is like a dark and fecund sepulchre beckoning me to begin a descent to the loam where surely only bodies may be found. No matter my children call and I shall answer, I will find them. Alright, so that just seems to be a standard video game setup. The, imp the impetus here is that we're, we're looking for our kids. Our children are missing and down to the earth you must go. Let's look in the bathroom. In fact, there isn't any signs of anything moving, except you, and the noise of children shouting occasionally. Well, there's some movement. It's a ball. Let's play! Play with us forever! <laughs> I would I would love a shining video game. Alright, so we got a pretty crappy looking room the door seemed to open in front of us. Perhaps we're in the servants' quarters. I mean, I suppose to that extend the colonialism the theme a little. Well, yeah. This guy seems pretty loaded, so all right. Uh, all right. So I think the the journal entries are mostly just hints. But they slept in the attic when they were babies in arms, and perhaps they have hidden there now. I remember I insisted upon it midway between my bedroom and my office. So I think that's the game just telling us that we should look in the. Yeah, it's very much a game just telling you, don't get lost. Here's where you need to go. There's a bad man coming. And there are more pig masks here. Oh, nice, a music box. Presumably.
Yeah. Oh, we found a diary entry from the kids. Edwin and Enoch. Is that a reference to anything that you guys know of? I don't know of that particular combination being a reference to anything, but... Alright, other than the obvious biblical overtones of Enoch, nothing's coming to mind at this moment. Alright. Daddy says there won't be a Christmas this year. He is much too busy. Nanny says we must not disturb him. He is ever so busy. He is gone for work before she wakes us, and often we are asleep before he returns. We found a bird in the garden with a broken wing. We gave it to Nanny, who said it was a filthy thing, and hit it with a rolling pin. Later we crept downstairs to bury the body when everyone was asleep. There was a pig in the garden. We heard it snuffling about. Then Daddy came and said we had to come inside straight away. He was furious, but we think he'd been crying again. The question is, I suppose, are they going for the evil babysitter theme, or evil nanny theme, or is that supposed to be the, uh... Or is the father's reaction supposed to be the strange one here? Or possibly both. Hard to tell with a game at this point. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're playing at. The candles left burning in odd corners are strange. There are candles up here? But perhaps that's just more of a uh, gameplay oh, yeah. feature than anything else. I do like the scattered masks everywhere. Yeah, it's weird. In awfully good condition to be scattered about like that, but... Anything in here? It is probably supposed to be disturbing us that the uh, toys in that bedroom appear to be scattered around as if they're being played with, but there aren't children that young to be playing with blocks. Or right. perhaps I've misestimated the age of these children. Yeah, it's hard to tell. We've only really... I don't know. It's weird. They can write. So they have a diary, so yeah, they probably wouldn't be playing with blocks. Typically, well, there are multiple ones. One could be, one could have written the diary, and the other could be still learning the alphabet, but that somehow doesn't seem that's, right. That, that's true. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's paintings that are apparently real paintings. Do do uh, we know any of these? Pig. Now, for the amount of art in this room, the illumination is terrible. Perhaps this is <laughs> supposed to be seen during the day. Yeah. Or perhaps they're all cheap knockoff copies. We can't exactly tell. <laughs> What is that on the couch? Uh, it's another pig mask. Oh, it's just another mask. Oh, but we have a gramophone yeah, that we use for voice recordings. I find it most useful. Ah, you have one of those wonderful Martin fills. Uh, no, of course not, my dear fellow. It's my own design, Professor, along with everything you see. Most useful. You understand, of course, where the Ministry sent me. That they have... concerns. Here I thought nothing could get less convenient to use than an Edison wax cylinder for listening to a recording. <laughs> I don't know if that was particularly illuminating. Oh, this is cool. 
What is that paper next to the Aztec style pyramid? It's, uh. Oh, it's Spain. Oh! Yeah. And, uh, there's something circled, like, right in the middle of it. And then there's a, a factory looking thing drawn over Granada. Huh. Uh, there's, there's a couple of them. And then this is pretty, uh, like, South American. Aztec looking. style? Yeah. So I guess that makes sense. But I thought I read Jaguar and I thought Aztec. And we got some Egyptian stuff. Well, this is proper British uh, colonialism. They'd have built the house more stable for one, and for the other, they've probably looted things from everywhere. Right. Curios are all the rage, after all. So we haven't seen the so Curio cabinet yet, but those are a lot of art assets for the amount of uh, time players will spend seeing them. Right. So a lot of these paintings are just regular people scenes. Some death stuff. And then... A little bit of a bestiality thing going on there. Dead babies. That looks like a standard, you know, neoclassical kissing Zeus type piece earlier. I didn't quite get a look at good look at it. Uh, which one? The, the woman kissing the swan. Yeah, that swan's probably Zeus. Hard to tell from context, but it would be fitting. I suppose that makes sense. Zeus was a bit of a horn dog. In any other modern game, you'd be grabbing that gun from over the mantle and using it to kill things, but something tells me it would be less than remotely effective in this game. If you could oh, even I didn't touch notice it. this the first time through. Yeah, no, most of the stuff in this game is kind of bolted down. But, uh,. Yeah, this uh, bust has kind of a... Um, Jaguar Warrior theme going on for it? Yeah, yeah. It's Very kind of Aztec it. theme, definitely. Are these paintings this repeating painting. from the other room? Yes, they are. I suppose that supports the cheap copies theory. That or you were just not supposed to notice. Oh my, it's a phone call. Hello? Alright. Precious Eagle Cactus Fruit. Help us. Did it say Any Precious takers? Eagle Cactus Fruit? Hey guys, just wanted to chime in with brief and hopefully relevant uh, notes on things that might be happening in the game that we didn't bother to look up at the time. Uh, and this is going to be the first of probably several as we go on. Precious Eagle Cactus Fruit is the name given to the hearts of the, uh, the sacrificed victims as the hearts are removed. Uh, once dead, the, the sacrifices are referred to as Eagle Men. So... Uh, are we being referred to as a sacrifice? Are we being referred to as the heart of the sacrifice? It's uh, it's an interesting tidbit. Not quite sure where we are with it yet. But uh, back to your regularly scheduled program. And then it said help us. That sounds like a puzzle answer more than anything else. Also, what's that card in that drawer to your left? That or a recipe for a smoothie. That would be an awfully angry, pointy smoothie now, wouldn't it? Well, let's interact sort of blend with that everything paper. Looks the same. All right. November 1898. All right, so, okay. We're a little bit earlier. Uh, the bank is refusing credit the ignorant swine. I sit alone at night and weep once the children and servants are safely asleep when they cannot hear me, my darling, how I need you now. They say I have squandered my fortune, that my investment in these latest machines has ruined the family name. What, that I was to remain a local butcher? What are these two arms compared to the multitude that can be applied without pay? Without tire, by adapting the mechanisms we find in the looms and in the mills, 
But if the bank has its way, it will all come to nothing. If they come for the house, I swear I will kill them. I will kill them all. I will take my rifle, my rifle. All right, this is so a pretty impressive to... house for a butcher. Yeah. This is a local butcher. That seems to just be a uh, establishment fighting against mechanization. There, perhaps there are some Luddite themes in here. Was that a secret? Yeah. Well, he did. Yeah, the note. Yeah, the note was supposed to hint at it. I'm just kind of playing through. I'm focusing more on the story than the puzzles. Cause I've already done all this stuff. You would think that a secret door that split a painting in half would be somewhat harder to detect, or somewhat easier to detect, actually. <laughs> You'd think there'd have been a bit more of a seam, or perhaps I didn't see it earlier. I wonder. I, don't, I didn't really go and poke over here. Yep. No, yep, it... the seam disappears. <laughs> yeah. Rather impressive That's... canvas, that. Indeed. Except for rendering errors around actually the border painted between on the, the two textures. I would believe that. You know, see-through paintings in here. I never quite figured out what the whole point of these tunnels was. It's... various points. It could be considered traditional. Oh, there's a note on the wall by the window. Left. Oh, right yes. There. I see it. Alright. Clockwork and the soul. Replacement is dissatisfactory. So like a pump. Better the intestinal canal like a tapeworm. Already hosting intrusion and the breed. Brass better than copper, more resistant, filament sewn to the bone hold. Uh, marrow pipe removal with needle potential, composite replacement straightforward, will respond to electromagnetic inducement to increase yield rate. Serum provides accelerated resetting, resulting in naturalized movement within 2-3 days. Subject still requires severing of frontal lobe to reduce emotional distress upon reactivation. Damn it, damn it, damn this wretched soul if only it were clockwork. Are yeah, these clockwork sounds... cyborgs it's hinting at? It sounds like it, doesn't it? And if I'm taking notes, why am I taking notes spying on myself in the study? Sometimes. I believe at the po it, at least in at least some uh, cultures around the turn of the century, it was uh, trendy to have the whole secret doors thing. Mm. But it's hard to tell for sure. Right for the bleeding. Also, is it just weird? Does that look like a Polaroid? Yeah, it's like photographs. that's more of a vintage era uh, picture. It's not quite the Polaroid, but it does have that because of the development process. Fair enough. Alright, so we got two way mirrors and pictures of people in the bathroom. Same paintings. That door literally closed. Oh, I was I, wondering if I was losing my mind. <laughs> uh, in Lily's honor, a banquet. We will fasten that great mouth down over the chimney and inhale the world and suck the fairies and the nonsense clean from your dirty heart. So while well, we're at another loading screen, do we uh, want to reflect on anything? Any theories thus far? There hasn't been much development yet, other than our protagonist here seems to be a bit of a peeping Tom. Hmm. And a bit desperate.
is somewhat strange. This is a butcher wealthy enough to try to automate butchering and able to afford this mansion. Something still doesn't add up here. Perhaps it's a family fortune he's gone into butchering, but that makes even less sense. Hmm. Doing some laps. So no. <sighs> okay, here's another uh, children's diary entry, October third, nineteen ninety nine. Daddy says we're not allowed to play with the animals anymore. We were playing hide and seek with Cook, and he came and shouted at us just as we were going to hide behind Mr. Grumpy Teddy. Cook says it's because of the guns in there, but he always lets us help polish them. So it can't be that anyway. That room is haunted. If you sneak around there at night, you can hear the ghosts in the walls behind the cases. They are often angry, or that's how it sounds. We think that's why you can hear them rattling their chains and slamming doors and things like that. You don't like it in there anyway. Alright, so that's the kids indicating that they can hear somebody running around in the peeping tom. I wonder what the rattling chains are meant to imply. Any number of things. Yeah. Oh, I missed a note. The weeping rooms. Once we sat to weep while was passing under weapons that cannot slay the angels to retrieve her from heaven, look beyond the paintings, Oswald, where once you watched her bathe, the children must have discovered those secret places. And, okay. So that was the game just telling us to go look for the kids in the tunnels. The voice on the phone, he speaks as if he knows me, and indeed I seem to remember him like a twin pulled away from the other at birth. I feel we are entwined, though I cannot conceive of how. I am a drowning man grasping for the surface within my own house. Beneath me, I know there are splendid architectures hidden in the dark, if I can only find the entrances. I must say, my dear man, you, you look awful. Yes, I... I seem to have picked up something rather nasty in Mexico. I do understand what you've been through. A lesser man would have crumbled, yet you have made all of this. Your great factory, your charities. It is a wonder for one man alone. It will all be made clear, Professor. But first, a drink. Okay. So apparently, uh, Mandis our protagonist went for some sort of trip to Mexico. So that might explain why he's thinking in Aztecs. It's all the like Mexican art. Yeah. It seems like this is something of a meat baron who is somewhat obsessed with Mexican art. Okay, my father's house has many rooms. And that's for my own, it also has secret chambers.
Did you read the entirety of that note? Uh, no, I left a little bit off. There was something about a magic trick. Apparently because there's a party. The, the only thing Apparently that I heard from you was, my father's house has many rooms. Yeah, it was like the last sentence. Uh, apparently there was some sort of, there's chains. Apparently there was some sort of party and men just decided to look like a pimp. And he ran from one room to another using the secret Abusing the secret there. doors to look like a magician. Now, is that supposed to be blood on the floor there, or...? I don't know. There's been a lot of stuff on the ground. And those are rats, so that might be blood, but, yeah. Everything that's there is also always, um, almost always accompanied by a wine bottle or a glass or something, except for here. But it's hard to tell since they've established precedent. Hands are bleeding, raw. I scrub and scrub, but the smell will not lift. How can I hold my children with these hands now? How can I kiss them goodnight with lips that have issued such instruction? Was well, that a note in the right drawer? Mm hmm. I just wanted to check to see if there were any others. So, our protagonist's new name is Lady Macbeth? <laughs> Alright, this is just... poetry. I suppose if you're a butcher, the blood would be... would keep coming back on your hands more plausibly. Yeah. Old Sally in the doll's cottager. Oh, she came a-snuffling by night around your door, with her pretty apron right down to the hoof, and her ringlets are fair, and her eyes china blue, like a half-buried hand in the wintry snow-o. Like a hand in the wintry snow. She'll beg you for apples through the window ajar. Her face be all hidden, but her eyes shine a flame, and though you'll be tempted, her bosom so fair, she'll snatch you and catch you and eat out your heart o. Oh. Repeat. So look to your manners come the eve of the year, lest Sally come calling for apples, my dear, and know that some doors never should open wide. Take heed of your father and keep safe inside. Disobedient children make Sally her pies. Oh, find warm Sally's beastly insides. So Sally sounds like a murder pig. Part of that poetry sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't quite place it. All right. December 20th, 1899. I am to have a visitor, the distinguished Professor A. He is come to ascertain my mental well-being after my prolonged absence from the club, but I am not stupid. He is here to spy for them. When they stalked the kipper, he was often called to pontificate upon lacerations and missing organs, and now he comes to me. To Dauphin Weedle and my dear sir, and but you must still grieve, and perhaps just a quick look at your engines, the triumph of the age. He knows nothing of loss, nothing of sacrifice, but to refuse, that would simply poke the hornet's nest, invite a swarm of interlopers and thieves. I must entertain this buffoon and submit to his intrusion. Perhaps I should show him the trippery. See whether his stomach, so trained by rummaging the innards of clumsily vivisected whores, is strong enough to stare into the real engines of his golden age. I may even introduce him to Jack, or his sons at least. We have stronger locks on the windows now, and we bring their toys to them. Interesting. Oh, that oh. wasn't the Kipper. That's supposed to say the Ripper, but this font is bad. Alright, so we gotta jack the Ripper. That makes somewhat more sense. It's like the Kipper. So we've got a Jack the Ripper reference, a Sherlock Holmes XP. 
And I'm pretty sure that poem earlier was meant to allude to Thomas Hardy's writings. Early, or one of his works about this time frame was called In the Night She Came, so... Ah. Mandus, do you know me? Who are you? Where are my children? Trapped, Mandus. Far below us. The machine is fouled. It is breached. It is flooded. The bulkheads are down. The children are engaged. If you help me, I can help you release them. Restore the power, Mandus. Drain the flooding and restart the great engines. Ah. Where should I go? Hello? Hello? All right, so so I just mysterious... pulled up the text of that poem I mentioned, and it might be interesting if they were actually intending to allude to it. Oh yeah? What does it say? Okay, this is in German. I hear nothing. Can't make out the font well enough to read it. Uh, so the, the poem. So the poem by Hardy, um, in the night she came, it was written around 1898-1899. And... Alright. Its text is, I told her when I left one day, that whatsoever weight of care might strain our love times mere assault, would no work changes there. And in the night she came to me, toothless and wan and old, with leaden concaves round her eyes and wrinkles manifold. So, you know, it's about a guy who's declared his love, but time and loss has broken it. And it becomes a ghost story haunting him. That sounds like a plausible reference for them to be making here with the themes we've seen so far. I believe we've been this way before. Yes, I seem to be doing a, a splendid job of running around in circles at this point. I'm gonna get As back. is traditional. Yes. This door probably opens. Nope. Ah. Hidden passageway behind the bear. Alright. We're starting to see some signs of a bit higher tech than we've seen earlier. Yeah. Are some those some a, is that a diagrams. damage engine? That looks like one of the very early clockwork computing suggestions, but I can't see it in enough detail to be sure. No, it yeah, isn't a can. computer. You can tell from the register up top with how the, uh, with the handle, that's definitely in that same vein of a mechanical calculator of some form. Interesting. This looks like it's a proper clock punk. Also, is there something on that crate behind you to the... To the left, I so thought I saw something. Oh wait, that's just tools that reflected. Okay. Yeah, yeah just tools. All right. Just gonna step back out here. Take a look at the bear. Um, the gentleman's butterfly exhibit was a nice touch. Not bad. I'm gonna that's call the timer moth, here. Isn't it? Everything's wavy. 
You can unlock it. I'm going to call the timer here. We're going to take a quick break and then uh, return right after these messages. Could- 